Hello and welcome to this Mithril Money video on convertible bonds and conversion percentages. Okay, first of all, what is a convertible bond? Well, if you've seen any of the earlier videos in this series, you'll know a typical bond looks something a little bit like this. We've got a face value, $100, let's say. We've got some kind of maturity date, let's say 2030. And we've got some kind of coupon rate, 5%. And we are going to be paying $5 a year to whoever has this bond for the next few years. And this will be issued by a company, Andy's Jet Skis Limited, on Mithril Island. And there we go, that's the normal bond. The problem is, is people are only prepared to pay $50 a bond. We want much more than $50 a bond. We can't really afford to be paying $5 a bond and have to give $100 away at the end and only receive $50 now. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to juice this price up. So what we can do is we can add on a little caveat here, a little window. We're going to add on a little bit of a window here, and this is going to go off to a little side document. And that's going to say this is a convertible. And from any point from 2020 on, you can convert this into 10 shares in the company, or you can keep the bond the way it is already. So you'll have two pathways, either keep the bond or turn it into 10 shares. And you've got 10 years before the bond matures to decide to turn it into these 10 shares. So that could be very, very attractive. The only problem is, is the shares are currently only worth, a typical share in Andy's jet skis is only currently worth $8 a share. So what that means is effectively, if you paid $80 for this bond, you'd be sort of breaking even on the shares. You'd be getting these 10 shares so we'll just draw them quickly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And they if you if you could turn this bond into shares right now, they'd be worth eighty dollars. So you'll pay a minimum of eighty dollars for this bond now. So we've juiced the price up to at least eighty now. Which is nice. So we're getting thirty dollars more. And remember for a company, um, they can just typically issue these shares at no cost to themselves. However, these convertible bonds do tend to be issued by younger, more volatile companies. This company might have gone bust before you get these shares. You might be defaulting on the bond as well. So they are a bit risky, these convertible bonds usually. Okay, hopefully you've got the idea. We've got now at least $80, but people will typically pay more than that because up to 2020, I'm currently speaking to you in 2014, so the six years to go, what we're sort of gambling on as well is that this $8 price is going to rocket up. Let's imagine it does rocket up to $20. That's not unreasonable for a young company that's selling a nice new piece of technology. I didn't tell you, but Andy's Jet Skis Limited on uh, Mithril Island is actually producing some fantastic top-of-the-range, state-of-the-art jet skis. So you've got these two choices. You can either go for the bond, and in 2020, you can turn them into shares. Now, all the way up to you deciding to turn them into shares, you will be getting your $5 a year from this coupon rate. So that's a nice thing. And if the share price doesn't go up too much, then you will get your $100 in the end, even if these shares, let's say they only go to $9 each, even if that's only worth $90, well then go for the bond and pick up 100 But remember, only if the company doesn't default along the way. So you've got these choices. Assuming there's no default, you've got a downside of getting 100 and you've got an upside up to infinity. You've sort of built a sort of a call option here. So this is why this attracts a lot of derivatives traders, because you've got this limited downside if the company doesn't default, and you've got this potentially unlimited upside. Imagine if you're buying into a Google and that's $200 a share, you're getting $2,000 worth of shares for an $80 investment. People will typically pay more than just that base $80 price. I'm going to pick a price for this bond now of $110. And that's not bad, is it? I was only getting $50 for the naked bond with the convertible option. I'm getting an extra $60 on top of that. That's more than twice as much money. And when I do print these shares, that's going to cost me nothing as the company, so long as it's within my authorised share limit. So when we get asked about convertible bonds, we often get asked about certain figures. And we'll do those certain figures on a spreadsheet. But if you've got the basic idea here, you're pretty much home and hosed. We just need to do these figures on the spreadsheet just so we can answer any questions and any kinds of tests. OK, here we go. So we're going to start with a nominal value for the bond of 100. And we're going to say Andy's Jet Skis Limited is starting with 100 
million shares. Now, what were we prepared to pay? We were prepared to pay $110 for this bond. The starting conversion ratio is we were going to get 10 shares if we cash in the bond from 2020 onwards. Remember, I'm talking to you from 2014, so that's six years to go. Now, the current conversion ratio, we got, we'll come back to this later, but this is if the company increases the number of shares through the life of the bond, you're going to want this figure to increase. Why? Let's just go back to a little drawing. Can you imagine this? You are paying, if you're paying $110 for those 10 shares, you're effectively paying $11 a share. And the real price of the share currently is only $8 a share. So you're paying this little premium on top in the hope the share price is going to go up. So you need to clear at least this. OK, let's say that happens. Let's say, yeah, the share price does go above your $11. And if you cashed in the bond, it would be worth $120 worth of shares. And then they double the number of shares. What's going to happen to the share price? It's going to halve, isn't it? So you have been diluted into a horrible negative position. So what most convertible bonds do, if there's a doubling of the shares, they will double the number of shares they give you to get you back into this nice position. So that will be tracked for you by your custodian or whoever's looking after your shares and your convertible bonds. So don't worry about that. And we'll show you an example of that very, very shortly on the spreadsheet. OK, so we just need to put in what the current conversion ratio is. But because the current number of shares is the same as the number of shares when the convertible bond was created, this should still be 10 shares per bond. So let's just work that out now. That's equal to this divided by this. And then we're going to multiply that by the original number of shares. And it comes out to 10 shares. That's not really a shock. Let's just comment that for you. There we are. I just need to put a little break in there because it goes off the screen. Uh, it goes into the chart a bit, but we can live with that. OK, current share price, what is it? Well, the current share price is $8 a share, we said earlier. Remember, that should be 10 shares at $8 a share. That should be $80. And you're paying 110 you're paying a $30 premium. Let's work all that stuff out as well. So the conversion value then is equal to the current number of shares you'll get per bond multiplied by the current share price. And that's going to give you $80. You're going to get $80 worth of shares. Let's just comment that for you too. Let's just eat a bit of the graph. There we are. Uh, what's the premium? Well, the premium is going to be the price you're paying for the bond. Take away what the shares are worth. That's $30 premium. So we'll just comment that for you too. Let's just bring that down here. Now, this is the crucial figure you'll see on tests and things. What's the conversion percentage? Well, you're paying $30 over the odds for $80 worth of shares. So we just need to do a very, very simple division. That's going to be that divided by that. And that gives you 37.5%. There we go. You don't really need this, but it gives you a nice kind of figure to look at. What's the effective share price? Well, the effective share price you're paying is the price divided by those 10 shares. And that's going to give you the $11 a share. And that's telling you here yeah, you're paying $3 too much per share. That's the current price. This is how much you're effectively paying. You're paying $3 too much. Let's just do a little sum for that difference. Very important, of course. That's going to be taking away the current share price. It gives you $3. You're paying $3 over the odds per share. Let's just comment those two slots for you. Nice and easy. There we go. And last one. Let's just bring that over there like that. Super. Everything's, everything's looking good. Right, OK, so let's just do then a corporate action. I'm going to double the number of shares here, and I'm going to hope that this goes to 20. And that's going to get around that effect that we talked about earlier, where we get halved and diluted, and then we double the number of shares we get. So we go back to our original position. That's fine. So let's go up to 200 million shares. And you can see, yes, we're getting 20 shares. We used to get 10. Now we're getting 20. That's great. But the prices are all wrong. We've got these negative premiums. This would never happen. You'd never pay $70 for $80 worth of shares. That's ridiculous. So we need to recalculate the price. Obviously, the price would probably halve, and the market would adjust that, often giving you a slight boost for extra liquidity. But essentially, the price is going to halve. So let's just press a little macro button to fix that. There we go. And we're back into normal territory, where people are paying too much for the shares in the hope that the shares are going to become worth $200, $300, $400 at the end.
So that's convertible bonds. Hopefully that makes sense. It's like creating a sort of extended call option on shares for those who like derivatives. Slightly risky in that convertible bonds are often issued by very volatile younger companies. But if they don't default, there's all sorts of arbitrage opportunities. You've got a limited downside and an unlimited upside. They're a fantastic thing to look at. I'll see you next time.